Pablo Picasso allegedly said that you need to learn the rules like a pro in order to break them like an artist. How's it, how's it? In the world at large, we are confronted with rules all the time. The rules of the road, rules of sports games. And learning photography is treated in much the same way. We are taught some rules and we consider those rules to be immovable, that, that we have to create photographs within those very strict confines. Today, we're going to transform you into a photographic James Dean, taking you from a straight-laced, rule-abiding photographer into a rebel. But unlike James Dean, you're going to be a rebel with a cause, and that cause is going to be the pursuit of artistic expression, of challenging the rules and creating fantastic photographs. In the early 1980s, I was sitting there with my dad and he was showing me how to use his camera and he taught me my first rule in photography and that was to always stand with my with the sun behind my back, you know, lighting the subject. And I think we've all <laughs> seen that piece of advice at some point in our photographic careers. You know, I know you have you have over there, right? And and it's it's well meaning, you know, it's it's a good foundation, but it's extremely limiting because photography obviously is about light and, and light is an integral part of taking images. But if you only stand with it facing one direction, think about you you can't do anything else, can you? So you you can turn around, you can photograph into the sunlight. You can photograph with, with rays of light coming down through there. The whole point, if you want to do this, is to do it, and this goes for all of these rules, is to do it with intent. You can break rules so long as it enhances the photograph, enhances the image, it makes it come alive somehow. Don't just photograph something willy-nilly and just say, well, I, you know, I don't care about the rules, because that's not enhancing your images. A great number of these rules come from places like camera clubs and judging competitions where they are trying to quantify an image, something creative, into a set of standards that is measurable across all of photographs. And one of the things that comes of this, and, and is a great thing in the wedding photography world especially, are verticals. That all verticals and all horizontals should be dead straight. The horizon on a landscape must be completely flat or then it's just wrong, right? Now granted with this one, if the horizon is just a little bit off, then it does look a little bit wrong. But if you, like me, are a big fan of say Dutch tilt, right? Then you just go like this the whole time, <laughs> one leg is shorter than the other, then that's okay. You need to do these things with purpose and that's the difference. If it looks like you have done something on purpose, then that's okay. So, you know, don't restrict yourself in thinking that a landscape horizon must be dead straight or that the, 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 the sides of a building should be completely parallel. You know, if that was the case, then everybody would only be allowed to photograph buildings with, with you know, field cameras, with, with movement. So it's one of those things that I think people get hit up on so much. Don't worry about it so much, man. Just, you know, just change it up however you feel about it, but do it on purpose. Do it so it looks like you have made that decision and not that you were ever so slightly slack. Since the advent of digital, there's been a lot of pixel peeping for example, because I don't know where it comes from and it's always been around ever since I've certainly picked up a digital camera, is that we were obsessed with sharpness, that sharpness is everything. And nowadays you have obviously people blowing up their images into the, you know, into, it was 500% on the screen and looking for the for the smallest imperfections. And there be, has become an obsession with sharpness, that if an image is not sharp, then somehow something is wrong you are letting the side down. It's like a sign that you are not investing enough in image quality. And of course, that's a nonsense because back in the day, you know, the film stocks were not sharp. If you wanted really sharp, you know, you would use a very slow speed film, you would use. But if you shot Kodak TMZ or have, you know, there's a 3,200 ISO black and white film, the, 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 the grain on it was like golf balls. So it wasn't going to be sharp. So the idea of sharpness is a relatively new thing that an image, if it's not sharp, isn't very good. Of course, the images can be, you know, a little bit fuzzy around the edges. Imperfections have always been part of photography. Don't worry about it if your image is not pin sharp. If it's slightly out of focus by mistake, then sure, that's a mistake. But this is what we are talking about, is how having the photographs, photographed with intent, with purpose. Don't be afraid to have something blurry. Don't be afraid to photograph with a holger. All these things are options for you to express and for you to try out. 
couple of years ago, I was doing some headshots for a company. And one of the options in regards to cropping that I showed them were square cropped images that chopped a little bit of the top of their heads off so you could fill the frame with their faces a bit more. And I quite liked them. I thought they had some impact. They were somewhat reminiscent of one or two images that I enjoyed seeing in the past. And the client came back to me and they said, oh, well, we don't like these ones because I don't need to tell you as a photographer, this is wrong because you've chopped their head off. Now, that's a fairly extreme example of having this idea that certain things cannot be cut off, that, that limbs and figures and bodies and, and what have you should be cropped at certain very specific places. Now, there are places where if you crop a limb that feels a bit odd, you know, so cropping somebody's legs at the ankles feels a bit strange, but you are being restricted if you think that those are the only places that you can crop a figure. So don't be afraid to experiment with odd cropping, with, with chopping into things or cutting off ideas. It can actually add a lot of interest and mystique and intrigue into your photograph. Now, with this particular rule and how to break it, a lot of it comes down to your gut feeling. How does it feel to you? Right? Does it feel that there's something a little bit off and not in a good kind of way about the image? If so, that probably will suggest to you that the cropping is quite not right. But if you think it enhances the photograph, then by all means try it. See what comes out. Feel free to experiment with bizarre croppings. That rather neatly brings us on to composition. And now composition, of course, could be a whole subject in itself. And in fact, if you'd like to have me do an episode about composition and the basics of composition, how to design a photograph, let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to put something together for you. Composition is tricky because it's the basis for a photograph that is held together. That is like the framework of one, what all of the other sort of thing elements are, are hung on. And if you just compose an image without any thought to composition, then it just falls apart. So that's that's probably the number one hurdle there. So what I would suggest that you do is rather than go for the obvious composition or the composition that you get told that you should use it in, in for certain subjects, like rules of thirds are a good example. You know, if you shoot a very flat horizon uh, of a landscape, there's nothing much else, and you put the, the, the interesting piece on a third, that's a fairly basic one. To, to consider, and you photographed it in a in a, in a in a in a landscape format. So think about how you could change that one up. You know what happens if you photograph in a vertical format by putting the the the, the tree dead set in the middle, have a symmetrical sort of thing. So play with people's expectations of how the composition is supposed to look. If that's something that you know is 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 a phrase. That you know we are supposed to photograph certain things in certain ways. So play, toy with people's accept, you know expectations in head and shoulders sort of sort of profile kind of portrait. Traditionally, the person should be looking into the broad part of the frame, so the, the part where there's more space for them to look into. I, however, prefer to do it the other way around. I like for the person to look into short part of the frame, and you know it grates some people's gears, but pff, I don't. So what, right? In my photographs, I, I like them and I understand that they should go around the other way, but I don't care because I prefer it this way around. This is showing in how we, we can approach the issue with people moaning at you about, oh, your rules or your, your images don't, uh, they, they, you don't know the rules, right? If you could explain the rule, if you could say, oh, well, I understand what it's supposed to be like this, but I've chosen to do it this way, then, then you're all good, man. That's, that's the way it should be, right? Know the rules. Know them like a pro, don't get hung up on them, and then we can break them like an artist. And maybe one day you'll be a bit, a bit like Picasso as well. As a little bonus for getting all the way to the end here, hit the subscribe button and I will give one subscriber a free one-to-one -one mentoring session with myself. A photographer who helped redefine the rule set of street photography was William Klein. Check out the video here that I've linked to and it's again in the description box below. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.